This was a game between two great players, Vichy Anand and Vladimir Kramnik. Um, it was played um, in 1998. Um, the opening was the Sicilian defense. Um, and the move e5 uh, characterizes the Sveshnika variation. So in return for having a, a hole on the, on the d5 square, uh, Black gets um, fairly easy development for his pieces and for the moment um, White's knights are a bit disorganized, in particular this knight is um, somewhat out of play and it takes uh, a few moves for White to bring this knight into the game. Um, so White went for the main line um, and now um, Kramnik plays bishop g7. The other main line here is uh, of course pawn to f5. Uh, but bishop g7 was played and now um, black is delaying for a little bit the move f5 but he still wants to play it. First the idea is to uh, attack this knight on, f5, on d5 something like knight to e7. So for the time being it prevents f5 by playing bishop d3 so increasing the control over the f5 square. Um, black carries on with his idea and exchanges the d5 knight and after both sides castle, white has to decide how to carry on. Uh, the main the main move here is um, c4, trying to um, force black into doing something like um, b takes, and then after knight takes, the knight would come back into the game. Of course, uh, black would probably have to play f5 in return. Um, in the game, uh, Anand played into f3. He's uh, delaying c4 for the time being, and um, and he controls the f5 square with this move. Um, of course, black somehow has to um, deal with that, and he can't um, let white play something like c4, or um, say if white goes c3, the knight um, c2, and then knight to e3, white's going to be much better, and this bishop is going to become really bad on g7. So, so black has to activate his, his pieces as soon as possible, and he plays f5. Uh, so white takes, and now black has to decide um, how to carry on. Um, he he has two bishops, and he wants to make them as active as possible. Uh, but say if he goes bishop to b7 first, then after bishop e4. White still holding the blockade on the dark on the light squares. So instead, uh, Kramnik decided to sacrifice another pawn, and he goes d5. Well, the idea of this move was pretty obvious. He wants to play e4, but at the same time, um, and this even if it does not win a, a piece, this would also allow him to activate this bishop. So of course, the little problem of playing d5 is that uh, White can just take it, and he does. And now black goes um, bishop to b7, and now both of his bishops are very active. He sacrificed two pawns though, um, and for the moment the, the white queen has to retreat to b3. So the white pieces are a little bit disorganized here, and black has a couple of moves to develop his narrative. Um, it's very tempting to play something like queen to g5 now and threaten g2 immediately, but then white has a simple move. Um, pawn to f3, and um, unfortunately black really doesn't have very much, but it's just going to later play bishop to e4 and kind of consolidate. So this is not the best way. Instead, the uh, army goes pawn to e4, and this, um, after the bishop retreats, um, this makes it harder for white to play something like um, f3, and also now the bishop is already wide open, and uh, there's pressure against b2. So now Kramnik goes uh, queen to g5, and um, um, here white has um, um, to somehow bring his pieces into the game. So he could have tried um, to bring this knight into the game with something like knight to c4, and then um, black has another useful um, sacrifice. He should then open up this bishop and play e3 um, after the forced knight to e3 the black would play something like bishop to d4 and again he has a lot of 
a lot of pressure against g2 and uh, it's kind of hard for white to, to defend. Black has enough compensation here. Instead, um, Anand played rook a to d1 and again uh, white goes for the same idea. He goes e3, threatening checkmate, so white defends and now uh, black activates the second bishop, so he goes bishop to e5. The idea of this move is to at some point play something like queen to h4 and if we go g3 then black can just sacrifice on g3 and um, at least get a draw. So these two bishops are looking very dangerous now. Um, white plays a natural knight to c4 and of course uh, the idea is that if, um, if black takes and tries to force a draw with something like queen h4 here, the white has a good defense. Um, f4, blocking the egg now, and then um, h2 is attacked but white has g3 and now it turns out that there's no perpetual because after bishop takes white doesn't have to take back instead he goes queen to g2 a very useful maneuver and now the fact that there's a pin on the g-file allows um, white to remain up a piece and uh, to win the game basically so this is a bit of a trap here of course after knight c4 Karmic doesn't fall for it instead um, he notices well that the bishop is attacked so he just moves the bishop away, and that um, um, keeps the threat of queen h4 on on the agenda. Um, so white somehow has to put the pressure on this bishop and basically deal with the threat of queen h4. So he goes knight, uh, goes rook to d4 here, and now if um, if black goes say queen to h4, well then there's a g3 move and it's impossible to capture on g3 because then the queen is hanging. So that's the idea of rook d4 uh, and Kramnik finds that, um, well, since the purpose of rook d4 is to control the fourth rank, uh, he has to somehow distract the rook from the fourth rank and he uses his other bishop uh, to do that. So he, he goes bishop to d5. Um, well now the knight is pinned and, um, and there's no longer a pin on the b-file um, which white was hoping for so basically uh, in order to not lose white has to do something about this otherwise black just wants to um, capture on c4 so white sacrifices the exchange back well he was up to pawn so now he gives up uh, the rook for the bishop and um, it seems like he's not doing very well because um, after queen to f4 the the pin remains it turns out that white has a nice trick he goes queen to e3 and now um, the knight nicely is protecting the the queen and uh, since the black queen is also attacked he doesn't have time to retreat well he does have time to retreat um, but he doesn't get a piece um, so he went queen to f5 and now white has a, um, a knight and two pawns for the rook so the material is rough balanced from all these complications uh, the game actually um, came to a position with the even material and the players actually pretty soon agreed to a draw the position simplified and uh, in this end game they both decided that um, white's slightly better but um, it's going to be really hard for him to win the game and the game is probably going to end as a draw anyway so the player agreed to a draw. Uh, so a very interesting game and uh, a very typical one for the Sveshnikov uh, where white is really trying to control the light squares in the center and um, black is um, fighting with sacrifices and uh, he's not really afraid to give up any material just so that he can activate his bishops so it's a very instructive game that shows the uh, the key ideas of this opening variation